Okay, so let's start off by saying that um, I want to say I was thinking about surgery for like almost a year to finally decided in January, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go through with it. Um, Amante was referred to me by a young woman that did my sister hair. And um, I at first had three options for a doctor. And two was um, Rodriguez and Medina, the male Medina. I end up choosing Amante based on just praying and constantly um, doing research and I felt like she was the safest and best bet for me and my body. So I want to say that Amante and her staff is amazing. She's very bubbly and positive. I love the fact that she prays um, over her patients before she does her surgery. She also takes only three patients a day, three times out of the week. So. She doesn't have a whole overload of patients that she's dealing with. That right there was like a definitely a, a green check for me. So um, when I first got to DR, I was picked up by her driver and I believe I was taken to the clinic right away. Yep, I was taken to the clinic right away and it was called CSIP. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And I did my labs. I had to pay extra 150 for um a long test because I had asthma in the past and I was a previous smoker. After I did my labs, um, her assistant, her lovely assistant, Leslie, reached out to me, let me know that I believe that I would be at the clinic five o'clock the next morning. And let me tell you guys, I was not nervous at all during the whole surgery planning procedure, the whole months that led up to it, except for the week before. I was so nervous that I thought I literally was having a heart attack. One day I had to seriously pull over and take myself to the urgent care to see if I was having a heart attack. I was nervous all the way up to the day before. I listened to my, um, you know, my positive affirmations at night and then I shook the nerves and I was fine. Um, I want to say CSIP was very clean in my experience. It was very clean and modern except for the EKG machine that they used. That was like some type of dinosaur age um, machine but other than that it was very clean um, I was taken to this room with my surgery sister we had our surgeries back to back and um, as she went down for her surgery I sat in that room waiting um, then the doctor came she marked me up she asked me what I wanted I showed her pictures and I must say that she delivered on my wish pick and then I took the blue pill so the blue pill did not make me sleepy like it did with um, my surgery sister and some other women that I've seen say that it really made them sleepy or they don't remember anything after the blue pill. When I took the blue pill, I felt like I was still up all the way until I got into the the surgery room and Amante was talking to me and the anesthesiologist was talking to me and I told her, hey, um, you know, I had three C-sections before, so I'm totally good with the epidural because I have scoliosis. So that was a concern that they thought I would need general anesthesia. So she said, okay, that's absolutely fine. And the next thing I know, she was putting this white liquid in my IV and boom, I was out. I did not wake up not one time during the procedure. When I woke up, the first thing I was looking for, thinking about was food. And then I puked. And then I um, thought, like, where's my surgery sister? Is she okay? Then I looked over and seen that she was there, and so was our overnight nurses. Um, overnight nurses, I stress that you find someone who is genuinely going to care and have actually real reviews because it makes the difference. My, um, I think her name was Rose Saura. Um, my overnight nurse, she was awesome. She was really, really sweet. She um, fed me and made sure I was good. Um, I know that my surgery sister, unfortunately, didn't receive that same type of care from her overnight nurse, even though they were from the same company. It was unfortunate, but I will stress that that is a big part because once you get out that surgery room, you cannot barely do anything for yourself. Okay. So fast forward um, to a couple days afterwards, um, I would say that the I had a tummy tuck, light bulb 360, and a BBL. The tummy tuck did not hurt at all. I was not in any pain 
for me, I wasn't in any pain, but I do have a high pain tolerance. Um, I wasn't in any pain. I was more um, in discomfort. To me, the biggest discomfort was like wanting to use the bathroom. You know what I mean by use the bathroom. Wanting to use that so bad and um, and then gas. Like I think I felt like my muscle repair was so tight that the feeling of gas was totally on a different scale than it ever, I've ever felt it before. But that was my struggle the first few days. Um, I want to say on a scale of the 1 to 10, the pain for me was a 6. Like I said, most of it was discomfort. Um, I tried to walk around because I got a lot of swellingness in my um, legs and my ankles and my um, and my thighs too because I had it and there was lots of swellingness in my thighs. I couldn't even fit the clothes that I came um, to DR with. So um, the recovery house that I stayed at was New Life Recovery House. I want to say that it, I have mixed um, feelings about the care that I received there. And I was two young women there that I was awesome. I loved the way that they treated me. I felt like they went above and beyond um, to the best of their ability to make me comfortable. But there were other staff that just made me feel like I was a burden. And let me tell you, ladies, that's important when you're picking a recovery home. Um, or you're gonna be having someone take care of you, you don't want to feel like you're a burden because simple little stuff that we can do on our own, like get a pillow and stuff, I'm pretty sure none of us wanna sit there and ask someone to get no pillow for us. So if someone makes you feel horrible about asking them something that is actually included in their job, that's the worst feeling in the world. And that's how I felt there. I don't eat meat or, you know, I'm a sometimes, or like, you know, but for the most part, I don't eat meat and, um, I literally was starving for the most part there. I got the same thing almost every day, a salad. It wasn't even really a really good salad, just like lettuce and tomato, um, and maybe on occasion avocado, and occasionally some rice and beans. So um, I spent a lot of money eating out, using Uber Eats and eating out. Um, and then I did not like that we could not have, um, we was gonna originally go, me and my surgery sister was gonna originally go with one massage therapist um but it was a whole discrepancy and we had to kind of like um you know really really kind of pull at the um heartstrings of the owner to have that person be able to come because she doesn't allow any outsiders to come to her facility which is fine that's her facility so that's on her but if you are choosing to have a massage therapist that's not included in your recovery house, you want to make sure to allow um, other people to come. Or if you want to have other work done, like on your face and stuff, and you want that person to come to the house, you want to definitely make sure that the recovery house is cool with that. Um, so I don't want to dwell on the recovery house and stuff like that. You know, um, just the learned experience. I want to say the massages. I had my massages at a, another recovery house called Healing and Beauty um, Recovery House with Oz. His um, IG is Draining with Oz. He is amazing. When I tell you that the first couple of days I was unsatisfied with my back, my butt, everything. I literally just kept saying, why did I even get this surgery? Like, I'm so mad. Ladies, you're going to go through that. You're going to look like a freaking, I don't know, like some type of beast when you first come out of surgery you're not gonna be all snatched and looking all lovely nah you're gonna be swell up and looking like the michigan man um so that's not uh that's not something that you should look forward to looking um straight up like how you want to right off the table um but again that's my experience and oz helped me change my perspective he assured me that things would change that would go down he drained me really 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 good he gave me um, lots of tips and massages, and so did his wife. And um, they definitely made my post-op care so much better. I the first, at first, I wasn't going to go back to the DR to have my round two, but I'm definitely going to go back to my same doctor, and I will choose to stay at that recovery home, um, Healing and Beauty, because of the way they treated me when I was there just as a guest getting a massage. They made my experience that I was having at the other recovery home and just in general with surgery a 360 turnaround it made me feel so much better so um let's see so the time being there um 
It went by so slow. One of those girls that was like, yeah, I'm going to stay 14 days. I don't know these girls that want to just come right back home. It's crazy. I can't imagine wanting to come back home so fast, but I never want to come back home so bad. I missed my family. I missed my children so much. I was so home um, sick and it was almost unbearable but like I said um that second recovery home that I went to for massages made the experience go by faster and so much better um but it does get depressing staying there for all those days especially when you're um in so much discomfort or pain so let's see okay my um my bedside manner or you know post surgery um with my doctor so my doctor i had to originally reschedule my uh, um original surgery date to the week before because she was going to get um um updated on her certifications and her credentials um with the board of surgery that she's with so the there was one week that I did not see my doctor I was seeing the doctor that works alongside with her, which is was pretty okay. And I did get to see my doctor after um, that week, and she was amazing. She definitely heard my um, listened to my concerns, and she made me feel assured when I was go home that it was gonna be okay. I will say that her um, staff, Leslie, has um, kept in contact with me. It wasn't no ghost situation where they just all of a sudden stopped just speaking to you they have been in contact with me since i left they've been very responsive and i have not had any problems and this is the reason why i'm going back for my round two with dr fatima almonte so you guys i'm gonna make another video on um some of the stuff that i use after surgery i'll just let you guys see i've been out my faha for about um a little over an hour this morning so you will see some um puffiness on the bottom of my stomach that happens but um so far I am loving my results currently I am at uh almost three months today is the 7th of September on the 12th I will officially make three months and I love it when I started out I was a 36 in my bus a 34 in my waist and a 44 in my hips so i've always had um but um now i am a 29 in my bus a 26 almost 25 in my waist and um a 43 44 in my ass so with my ass i feel like she really shaped it to give me the shape that i wanted which was a heart shape I don't know if you guys can see, it was a heart, um, upside down heart shape, and I did not have that shape before, so she definitely contoured it for me, and uh, she just, she snatched me to the gods. I'm still super swollen, according to my massage therapist. She said that I'm going to get much smaller, so we're going to see how that process goes along and how my final look will look six, nine months from now, however long that'll take. Okay, guys, so I'm going to make another video about some of the stuff that I use for my post-op care. Speak to you soon.